Hello, good afternoon and welcome to Midday Live. It's coming to you live from our news hub here at Adesawa in Kandakra. My name is Parkus Yasari. Top of the bulletin this hour. Chairman of the New Patriotic Party, Freddie Blay, describes suit against him by Shraj as incompetent. Also, the Black Stars of Ghana seek to end decade-long drought at the Africa World uh, Cup of Nations with opener against Benin. The Ghana Water Company describes 8.1% increase in tariffs as inadequate. Also ahead in this bulletin, the Auditor General indicts Ghana Broadcasting Corporation for failure to account for about $3 million collected as TV license for 20 years. And also on the international front, Iran's president responds with defiance to latest sanctions imposed by the United States. We've got details of these and many more stories coming up in the next 60 minutes. We are streaming live on Facebook. Remember, you can also join us with your views, comments and suggestions on any of our top stories this hour. We're very active on social media. Our handle is TV3GH on Facebook and on Twitter. Now, the 2018 Auditor General's report has indicted the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation for failure to account for TV license it collected. They failed to pay fees exceeding 3 million cities into the consolidated fund for more than 20 years. The Foreign News Desk report has more details on the latest report by the Auditor General. The report says, contrary to dictates of the Financial Administration Regulation 2004, the corporation did not remit TV license fees collected from 1993 to 2017, totaling 3,637,754.20 Ghana cities into the consolidated fund. It recommends that management takes immediate steps to have the monies paid. Again, the Auditor General's report reveals that the corporation under stated revenue realized for the 2014 World Cup by 3,464,878.59 Ghana cities. On this, the department advised management to update the financial statements and properly account for the said amount failure of which officers of GBC who were responsible would be surcharged. In addition, the 2018 report by the Auditor General's Department states that a review of the contract agreement signed between the Ghana Television Consortium and Optimum Medium Prime Limited showed that two major financial clauses were amended without approval by the consortium. The report directs management of GBC to furnish the source of authority for varying portions of the agreement. It also requests management to avail documentation in support of outstanding VAT remittances sent to the Ghana Revenue Authority, GRA, and advised GBC to ensure that future agreements are not unilaterally varied by either party. Furthermore, it states, due to the management's non-compliance with financial regulations that governing the opening of bank accounts, an amount of 91,300 Ghana cities out of cash received for the 2014 World Cup was deposited into an unknown bank account at Zenith Bank. The Auditor General advises the State Broadcasting House to provide the account name and other details of the account into which the said amount was paid. It also asks GBC to furnish the audit team with copies of the bank statement from its inception to 28th February 2018 for further action. According to the report, as a result of weak internal controls on revenue, transmission certificates were not issued for some of the activities of the corporation. It asks management to put in place systems to track the records of all programs of the corporation with transmission certificates. Finally, the report says an invoice issued to the British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC, in respect of co-location 
was under-invoiced by 93,203.53 Ghana cities. On this, the Auditor General advises management to recover the difference from the BBC. Away from the Auditor General, the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission, PURC, has approved an 8.01% increase in water tariffs from, from July. The increment has been necessitated by the city depreciation to the dollar, uh, projected inflation and increasing electricity and water demands. The PURC last Friday approved an 11.17% tariff increase for electricity from July 1. The PURC approved the increment after considering proposals from the utility companies. All right, we've been joined by Head of Corporate Communications at the Ghana Water Company, uh, Stanley Mate, who is here with us in the studio right now for some discussions on the latest increment. Uh, thank you, Stanley, for your time. So I have heard uh, that you are quite dissatisfied with the um, amount that's been raised. Um, why so? Yeah, um, we have requested for a 57% increase um, only to be given 8.01%, um, uh, which is um, very inadequate for... To, to help us or to sustain our patients. So they are regulators. There's nothing much that we can do. We'll keep engaging them to see how best. Did you say 57%? Um, yes. That, that, that was, sounds uh, quite uh, outrageous. Yes, because um, one, they, they themselves have talked about the city depreciation against the dollar. And you know that uh, a major component for the treatment of water is uh, the chemicals that we use. Um, now, apart from the fact that we buy the chemicals in, in foreign exchange, um, which is going high, the cost itself um, at the supplier end is also increasing. Apart from that, we have had to use more of the chemicals than hitherto we were using as a result of the uh, pollution of our, our river bodies. So um, that one alone um, is causing a, a major increase. Now, you also realize that there's an increase in energy and 44% of our um, um, expenditure is uh, with energy. So 44% alone takes energy. Now, how about chemicals and overheads, logistics, and all that? There's been cost of fuel. The, the cost of fuel has been rising over the past um, a few years, you know. And so it all affects our patients because uh, those are the components to which we use in our patients. But is it also a f not also a fact that customers will eventually end up paying more because of the levy on the uh, desalination project in Teshi? You know, that's just a restoration of the original tariff. Mm. Okay, so we were given some tariff, we were paying, and the diesel had a component in that tariff. Now, because you are set a deep the diesel down for a renegotiation, the PLC felt that, okay, if the diesel is not in operation, then let's get that component off um, the tariff. And then, because we had collected that tariff over a period of time, they requested that we um, refund part of um, that amount or that amount to customers. That brought about the 10.8% um, um, uh, deduction mm. or decrease in the tariff in February. Mm. Now, we have put back into operation the diesel. And so, it makes sense for us to, uh, for them to restore um, um, back the original type. Mm -hmm. So the that PURC is the PURC itself, type. Uh, in its statement, ahead of the announcement, said he had engaged with uh, all of the major stakeholders, including yourself. Exactly. Uh, how come your argument could not be sustained? Yes, we did our best, but, you know, they also have taken into consideration the social impact. Now, the ability to pay by the government, and the PLC does not only stand for the utility, but both uh, the utility and um, consumers. So, in effect, they have had to take all those things, and the resultant um, is what we have now. Mm. But it's it's been so over over a very long period, and, you know, um, since the inception of um, the period of regulatory body, uh, we've always had less than we have requested for, and so um, it's impacted negatively on the utility. But for prudent management, um, the the GWC, I'm sure, may have collapsed by now, but we have worked very well, steadily. We have done all we could to improve on our operations till now. Now, our only consolation is the fact that we are state owned, and when there's any eventuality or when we are stuck somewhere, mm. we can only fall on government. On the state. Yeah, but it's, it's, it would have been better 
for government, for the people of Ghana, for the utility, um, the GWCL, mm. if we have weaned ourselves from uh, from government so that we can invest more. And, and by so, uh, you, you know, mean that consumers have been allowed to pay realistic? Exactly, because we've never had cost-reflective tariffs. Mm. I mean, it's always been like that. You request for a certain percentage and you are given lower. And mm. uh, it puts a lot of stress. The, the rains have uh, set in again. Too. It's become almost an annual ritual that during these times, we often have the spillage of the Bagri Dam as well as a Wager Dam. Um, are we to expect any of these in the coming days? Yes, um, we, we started uh, spilling um, the Wager Dam a month ago. Uh, we had announced to the general public mm and we've been managing the spillage. And so we hope that so far, we haven't had any eventuality yet. Mm. We haven't had any, um, any, any, any challenges yet. We are hoping that uh, it will still continue like that. But we are still measuring the rate of inflows as to um, the rate of outflows, so that we need to have that, that balance, at least. The maximum operating level is 47. Mm. So if you are able to get to 47 and below, then we can safeguard the integrity of the dam. So that's exactly what we are doing. So we are taking also into cognizance the fact that there are human beings and properties downstream. Mm. So we are managing the flow, but we are also taking into um, cognizance the, the uh, integrity of the dam. So right. we need to maintain that and we need to uh, do well to lives safeguard lives lives as well. Lives Thank you very much. Uh, Stanley yeah. Marte is the uh, Public Affairs Manager of the Ghana Water Company. Meanwhile, the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission, the PURC, has justified the 11.7% upward review in electricity tariffs. Now, the Commission says the decision was as a result of prudent cost review and effective monitoring after considering tariff proposals from stakeholders, including the utility service providers. While the maximum demand charge on industrial customers, referred to as a special low tariff meant to cushion Ghanaian industries and businesses, has also been removed. All right, so we're going to stay a while longer on issues of tariffs. Uh, I've also been joined in the studio by energy consultant Kojo Poku. Kojo, thank you very much for your time. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. How are you? Good. I'm very well, thank you. Yourself? I'm okay. Okay, so let's nice talk thing. about the, the, the recent uh, tariff. You just about to say something? Sorry. No, I just say you have a nice tie on. Thank you. Thank you. I'm learning from you. <laughs> <laughs> Kojo, so um, we had an announcement from the PURC of an increase in electricity tariffs. Uh, by some 11.17%, and uh, they sought to justify that yesterday. Uh, talked about increasing inflation and also the exchange rate uh, differentials over the period. Uh, justified? Yeah, very. Um, mm. Some of us have even expected it to be more. Mm. Um, you realize that back in February, we were looking at the increase in February, which was deferred. And if the February has been announced, it would have come up more. Um, I think the reason that February was deferred to January there were some mitigation that the government felt they can make to PLC. Let's look at how PLC, you know, we are trying to make it look like PLC, who have been doing this work for a very long time, don't really know what they're doing. And people are bastardizing PLC for one time they've decreased it, and one time they've increased it. Look, everybody makes their submission to PLC. If PLC looks at the figures, and it's a commission, they sit, work the numbers, and if it's justified, they will increase accordingly. In February, when they intended to increase the figures, they had the inflation, the FX, and all that goes into them looking at an upward increase. But then the government, which has a responsibility to Ghanaians, now felt that, look, if the increase based on what is there goes ahead as it is, it might be burdensome to Ghanaians. So the government seeks to do certain things. And based on the exercises conducted by the government, I mean, key in that is the cost of uh, fuel which is the gas that we use. Subsequently, from 2017, um, we have been told that government has been able to reduce the cost of gas from 9.8 to 7.8, now to 6.08, which all these things plus other mitigating factors that they presented to PLC. PLC accepted the figures government have presented, now use that to offset the calculation that they have. And that is where we end up with 11.17. And just like the water service providers, the utility uh, service providers as well, we're expecting something higher. Uh, how will this impact on the operations? Well, it would impact, you see, rightfully, there is going to be, going forward, more people coming into 
the system. Mm. Last year, IPBs. on 2017, mm. no, 2017, mm. when there was the reduction, mm. there was increase in demand. Okay. When there's increase in demand, it means that all these PPAs that has been contracted, which government does the take or pay, and the capacity charges government pay. Mm. Since the demand is going up, it means that more of the electricity is being used. We are getting revenue from these um, electricity being used. Mm. One of the big changes that people have not also factored in is PDS. PDS has come in to guarantee that revenue mobilization works well. They are going to reduce the losses in the past from 2015 till about 2018. The losses is about 24 point something, sometimes 23.9. Mm. PDS has guaranteed a 22% um, which is a reduction of about one point something percent within the coming years. Mm. And it would improve to about 8% at the end of the five years that PDS is in, um, the first five years PDS is in place. Mm. So revenue generation, technical losses reduction, those will be able to help mobilize a lot of money and pay the bills that are supposed to be paid. So I think the utilities or the IPPs will be very happy with the 11% mm. because I think it brings it to the level that the industry wants I was at that press conference yesterday and a very important question was asked by uh, one of the journalists from Radio Go that why do we consumers have to pay for the uncollectible revenues? Why, why are we being burdened with that? Well, it's the practice. Mm. Look, you look at the IPPs mm. produce electricity mm. at a cost. Mm. When they produce electricity, they put it on the lines to you and I. Mm. In the technical generation, it's copper lines, so some of the electricity dissipates. Mm. Some of the old machinery that we have also does not help in keeping and storing electricity that's supposed to come to you. Mm. So we, those are the technical losses. Okay. In other parts of the world, it's between 5 to 8%, which is acceptable. Mm. But in Ghana, we have the commercial losses, which is the people doing the illegal connections, mm. people, the money's not being collected on mm. time and being collected at all. Mm. Those are the things that... But they need to be reduced. Yes, but that is why PDS has come in. PDS mm. mandate is to reduce. They, they have specific mandates. Mm. Reduce technical and commercial losses, bring in efficiency. Mm. So the big change are where the PULC have looked at the numbers and mm. said that, look, with PDS now coming in and guaranteeing certain payments, Going forward, one of the things that's going to happen is that, you know, ECG is still there, mm. which is structured ECG. Mm. ECG is going to give power to PDS. If ECG gives PDS, let's say, 2,000 megawatts, if PDS guarantees 100% payment to ECG. So ECG now gets 100% payment, right. be it that PDS is able to collect or not. Right. That's not ECG's problem. problem. Right. So going forward, we, are, we know that whatever... Um, megawatts is used and distributed by PDS, mm. you and I, PDS is going to come with us with sticks to collect their money. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Kajopoku, for your time. Uh, Kajopoku is an energy consultant helping us to do some analysis uh, in the energy sector with regards to the very latest increase in electricity tariffs. You're still watching Media Life here on TV3. You can join us with views, comments and suggestions on any of our top stories this hour. We're also streaming live on Facebook. Uh, you can join us uh, on TV3GH on Facebook and on Twitter. Now, one of our top stories this hour. The chairman of the governing New Patriotic Party, Freddie Blay, has described as incompetent an application filed by the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice, praying the court to hand him a jail term for failing to cooperate with investigations. He maintains he has at no point disrespected, maligned or disobeyed any directive from Shraj and has always been in the country not avoiding service. Here's a report by my colleague Selam Amenya. The Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice, Shraj, has been on the heels of the NPP chairman for months, insisting they are unable to locate and serve him with copies of a petition demanding investigations into procurement of some 275 buses for the NPP. Shraj filed an application praying the court to commit Freddie Blay for contempt for failing to avail himself to receive the petition. The court had earlier ordered that Shraj finds the politician at his residence and present him the document. Lawyer for Shraj, Beat Doku, on Tuesday told the court officers of Shraj had been to his residence but he was not available. The court, presided by Justice George Kumson, however said that issue was no longer relevant since he has showed up in court and filed a response to Shraj's contempt application. Justice Kumsin handed the lawyers 14 days to file written submissions. 
he adjourns the case to July 24 to deliver judgment on the contempt application. Freddie Blay spoke to the media after proceedings, insisting Shraj is not treating him fairly. I have a house. I'm all over this country. So anybody who says he can't find me to sell this, I don't know what to sell this. All right, that was uh, chairman of the New Patriotic Party, Freddie Blay, there. Now, the moment we've all been waiting for, football. Now, Ghana's search for a first Africa Cup of Nations, crowned since 1982, kicks off on Tuesday evening. That's this evening with a Group F encounter with Benin at the Ismaili Stadium on Tuesday. Now, regarded as one of the powerhouses of African football, the Black Stars have won the Nations Cup four times. Only Egypt and Cameroon have won uh, seven, five times uh, consecutively. Uh, or have won more. However, the last time they were crowned champions was 37 years ago in Libya. Since then, the Black Stars have lost four finals with a recent one in 2015 when they were beaten by Ivory Coast despite taking a 2-0 lead in the penalty shootout. The Black Stars finished top of their qualifying group ahead of Kenya, Ethiopia and disqualified Sierra Leone. All right, so we'll just be joined in studio by Head of Sports here at TV3, Media General, uh, Michael OTAJ. Thank you, Michael, for your time and good to see you. Pleasure to be here. So I know you've been to Dubai, you've been monitoring the training uh, ahead of the match today. What are your expectations? Well, I would expect that the Black Stars will win. Um, I don't expect the biggest statement in terms of, uh, you know, I don't expect a performance that says we are potential African champions, but I'm expecting a good start. Remember, the start of tournaments has always been tricky. Mm -hmm. It's not just for the Black Stars, it's for a lot of teams. So if you look back in recent memory, um, I saw in the report mention of the periods when the team has been to the final. In the last two ones in 2010, the Black Stars lost the opening game. Mm -hmm. To Ivory Coast in 2015, the Black Stars lost the opening game uh, to Senegal. So um, the start of tournaments can be a bit tricky and complicated. But Benin is the sort of team you want to start again, and my feeling is that uh, like they did in 2017 when Ghana beat Uganda in the opening game, the Black Stars will find a way past Benin today. Uh, quite apart from the earlier challenges we had with who was going to be captain, who was going to be general captain, mm -hmm. morale in camp seems to have been boosted. What's different about this national team? I don't think there's a lot different. You know, I think sometimes before the start of a tournament, the team, Chris Yapia has been talking about this is the most peaceful camp that he's seen. The players are, seem to be on the same page, but you never know. You never can test the depth of these things until they've gone out in a game and uh, players are rattled by an initial tackle, referee doesn't give, things don't work out well, then you begin to really see the character of a team. And I say this particularly about the Black Stars because this is a team that's promised so much and delivered very little in the past. So I want to be able to put that within context. The only thing is that uh, maybe the, the level of expectation is mm. not as strong as it was in the past. Mm. Um, also, when you look at the last two times the team has been to the final, it was almost the same thing. Mm. In 2015, after the 2014 World Cup, nobody really cared. Mm. And the team went all the way to the final. Mm. 2010, major players injured. We had shipped a lot of the players from under 20 to join up with the team. And when many people didn't expect the team to do what the team went all the way. So maybe the only thing is that the level of expectation might work well in favor Michael, of the I'm going to talk about the level of expectation. I asked this question because... We've had very good players in the past. We've had the likes of Sula Muntari, Michael ACN. You know, the creme de la creme of African football. Today, we don't seem to have that, that level of, uh, you know, agility within the squad. I mean, who, who are you expecting, for instance, to shine out in this tournament? You know, for instance, we've heard about the potential starting lineup. It has mm -hmm. Thomas Partey, mm -hmm. very good season, start for Atletico Madrid. Mm -hmm. By mile, one of the top 10 clubs in European football at the moment, and runners up in Spain, so he is a big deal. Koja Samoa is a big deal, regular at Inter Milan. Um, you also got in midfield today, Mubarak Wakaso, definitely going to start. He is a big name player, Christian Achu from Newcastle. It doesn't ring, it's not got the same ring of Montari, Apia, Asian to it, but these are players who've got reasonably good quality for us to expect them to do well. We'll look at expectations ahead of the match tonight, but we've also been finding out more uh, from people People on the streets uh, take a listen what they think about this Black Star team and expectations ahead of the match tonight. Ghanaian, uh, I'm supporting the Black Stars to win this time around because it's been quite a long time since uh, we took a cup. Somewhere in 1982, we took our last cup. So I'm very sure uh, the Black Stars can bring the, 
couple. The coach actually I've been seeing and the way I've been following, the coach has actually been in the, a better position to put the players um, uh, on the forefront of uh, going to win this particular match. And I think most of the players, again, are committed enough to actually go in for this call for this African Cup of Nations. I would prefer Ghana to win as a Ghanaian, but looking at our team and then the preparation, um, I'm not sure, but I, and I'm not doubt, I, 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 I don't doubt if Egypt win, but I'll be surprised if Ghana win. Oh, Ghana, though any easy my but see me in here, be a second and I'll be sir. Well, I think, uh, the Black Stars have the chances of winning the Afghan, Afghan Cup of Nations, yes. Looking at their history, for the past 37 years, we have strived to be able to uh, take, uh, get the cup, but uh, it hasn't been so for us. So I think that, as our captain said, as Samoajan, per the uh, interviews that we've had, they've had, yes, I, I think that there's more chances of them, like, taking the Afghan Cup of Nations, since they themselves have said that there's much confidence of them taking it. All right, you heard voices from the street of Accra on what they make of tonight's match. Now, Michael, this is one of the rare moments that brings us together as Ghanaians. There's lots of joy, there's lots of unionism. Let's look at our team, for instance, our group I'm talking about. Now, we're playing Benin tonight. What, what do you expect? A very difficult game. They are is it? neighbours, mm. but also this is a Benin team who've played uh, nine Nations Cup games and have drawn, I think, only two. They've not won a game at this level, so as a proper big name team versus an underdog but these games can be tricky they have uh, Steve Mooney who plays in the English Premier League you've got as well Stefan Cessigno ex Sunderland two good players amazing players they can mm. also call on a good dose a bit like a lot of the West Africa French speaking West African mm. countries mm. a good dose of players who've had the benefit of good French football right. education and can call on them because of their background mm. but it's not a team that should strike fear in you uh, it's also not a team um, and it's because I hear people use this uh, explanation of we don't have big name players, neither does Benin. Mm. So I'm not sure. Sessignon is it's quite a big player. Yeah, but his Sessignon is not your party now. Right. You know, he's, he's got a, he was he was up there and about, but no longer. So basically, the point I'm making is that in terms of player quality, there is enough within this Black Stars team to be able, I think, to cope mm. with what Benin has to offer. So, so you expect us to sail through without any difficulties at all? Benin. Guinea-Bissau, if we don't get out of this group, we have no business playing in the ah, nation's Thank you very much, Michael Otege, uh, group head of sports here at Media General. Thank you for helping us with some analysis ahead of today's match. Now, away from football, the six persons arrested for the murder of a 57-year-old tutor of a Siakwa Salvation Army Basic School in the Boakwa South Municipality of the Eastern Region have been remanded into prison custody to reappear on July 30. The teacher was brutally beaten to death owing to a dispute over snails that happened three years ago. Well, this is to enable the prosecution team seek advice from the Attorney General's office. Meanwhile, a postmortem of the teacher's death have been tendered in. The age of the six accused persons is still under contention. They were charged with conspiracy to commit murder to wit murder. Here's the watch here on TV3, we're streaming live on Facebook. We're also active. Our handle is TV3GH on Facebook and on Twitter. Let's know what you make of our top stories this hour. And also, if you have any views at all to share on the Black Stars match tonight, feel free to send them uh, on our social media pages. We'll take a short break. Hello, all there, and a warm welcome to the business news segment here on Midday Live. Now, the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, COPEC, has called for the closing down of the 10 fuel retailing outlets which uh, under delivered to customers. The stations have been fined 5,000 cities each, but COPEC says a fine is not deterrent enough. COPEC confirmed the incident after the Standards Authority had clamped down on fuel retailing outlets. We recommend the owners or operators of this particular station to immediately halt selling to the public or shut down this particular outlet and ensure the right things are done to forestall any further shortchanging of the unsuspecting public as duly captured by the Ghana Standards Authority. The PRO of Concerned Drivers Association, David Agbado, called for sanity in the sector. I want to urge all drivers, both GPRTU, Pro Tour, Tiger, and Nemet, 
when you go there and you feel cheating, ask of that 10 liter car and then do the examination yourself and see whether they are saving you with the right one. If not, report it to the necessary authority. COPEC is again recommending a compensation package for consumers. In other news, cocoa processing giant Cargill says it is focused on improving lives of farmers and their communities. The company, in its 2017-2018 sustainability report, noted it is bent on helping cocoa farmers to build more resilient and sustainable businesses. The report highlights work being done by the cocoa processing company to better the lot of farmers. The 2017-2018 report covers farmer support and improving community livelihoods. The human relations lead at Cargill Cocoa and Chocolate Africa, Francis Yohonu, said one of the key principles of Cargill is to support cocoa farmers. How do we improve the livelihood of our farmers? Everything that we are doing now, we are looking at sustainability. So how do we have to, we, are we going to ensure that we have a sustainable supply of cocoa from bean to bar? And as we do this, there are a couple of things that we think we want to do to make sure we achieve our ambitions. All these are some of the things that we put on the ground that we do, that we believe when we achieve all these things, including making sure that everything is going well, we will be able to achieve our ambition that we have set for ourselves. And the sustainability country lead at Cargill, Samuel Ampana, said the Cocoa Intensification Sustainability Report is aimed at expanding farmers' businesses. As we produce the cocoa, we protect the planet. So as part of those activities, we engage and we train the farmers mostly on climate smart issues. Through this practice, we managed to also map their farms. We've mapped over 12,500 cocoa farmers' farms, and by that we are able to trace the cocoa that we buy from these farmers. And we are also be able to know where there are risk of our farmers encroaching protected areas, and we take the necessary measures to correct them. The sustainability report is expected to help cocoa farmers improve their yields and to ensure the sector thrives by reducing deforestation. Well, that's all for the very latest in business news. For more business news stories, you can log on to our website www.3news.com. All right, so away from business, uh, let's do some other stories. And illegal dumping of refuse and open defecation along the beach of Winneba in the central region is posing a threat to the health of several communities along the coast. Our reporter Joseph Armstrong visited Winneba and reports. A Sabbath of Winneba along the coast is busy on Saturday morning. The rocky nature of the beach has lost its beauty. Illegal dumping of refuse and open defecation have become the order of the day. The rocks along the beach has become a fence between men and women who visit the shore to openly defecate. On my left is where men or boys come to defecate and on my right is where women or girls come to defecate because they claim there's not even a single public toilet here for them. More people arrive even after sighting our presence, but with caution. And then several others arrived, this time without any caution. From the main Winneba London beach to upon Chin -e Tree and beyond, filled and human excreta have taken over. The residents admit to their guilt. Where do you guys defecate? At the shore. Why? Because there is lack of public toilets around. Mm. And where there are some, they are too far from here. So we always do it at the shore. Including yourself? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. So where do you dump your refuse as well? At the shore, at the same place. Mm. Is it good? It, it's no, even though it's no good, but because we are lacking it here, I think that's the major reason why we do it there. Where do you guys defecate? At the seaside, yeah. But Assemblyman of Namba Electra area, Stanley Imprim, blamed the attitude of residents on the lack of public toilet in the community. It is estimated open defecation cost Ghana some 79 million US dollars annually through tourism loss, water pollution and death among others. The Sustainable Development Goal 6 
aims to, among others, by 2030, achieve access to adequate and equitable sanitation and hygiene for all and end open defecation, paying special attention to the needs of women and girls and those in vulnerable situations. Ghana will need to do a lot more to tackle issues of sanitation, not only at Winneba, but across the country. Until government enforce the laws on open defecation, residents will continue to defecate here. In the name of there is no public toilet in the community. My name is Joseph Armstrong Gold, Alugbe TV3 News, Winneba. All right, uh, Joseph Armstrong reports. You're listening, you're watching the business. You're watching Media Life here on TV3. We'll take a short break. Now, about 100 containers and wooden structures dotted along the Accra Tema motorway have been demolished by the Ayawaso Wagon uh, uh, Municipal Assembly. We cross over live now to Joseph Frimpong, who is currently there and reports that squatters have vowed not to relocate from the Kled site despite the authorities saying so. So we are currently located uh, along the Tema Accra motorway. When you are hitting the motorway from Accra, right on your left, you find uh, on your stretch, on your left, you find a number of wooden structures and containers dotted along that stretch. Well, today hasn't been a good day for people who live here. I uh, can say that they are squatters. Well, the entire stretch have been cleared right from the motorway to the it's Legon Tobod. The entire area has been cleared by city authorities. We are told that the Ayawaso West Wagon Municipal Assembly came here this morning to basically clear the entire stretch. According to them, they have given various and series of notices to them for them to clear, but they have been adamant. But today has not been too good for them. They have cleared the entire place. When we got here, we tried to engage a few of the squatters who live here, but they are so aggressive, they are not ready to speak to us. According to them, they claim that they bought the lands from chiefs in the West Wagon area and that they have entitlement and document to stay here, to do business and also to live here. So you can see from the shots that a few of the squatters are trying to uh, salvage a few things that they have and also most of them have grouped and then discussing their next dwelling place as to what they want to do. We're trying to speak to a few of them to see uh, if they can speak to us. If I show it to me, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. Five years. I'm going to say 2002. How are you going to cry? I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. At the same time, I had a few questions. I caught them up. The people be a area be a many of them be a had a me come me come back me me be share with her. Yeah, yes, blocks factory. Inti I had it for so many years. Now how do you say Emremu and sister must move down with her? Say, say, hano. And yes, say, you know, say, you pan from a bed. You pan from a bed. You pan flat. At now, I'm missing four. I want to do many things. So, you want to say, you quite do my bad. Motor will cross. Must move her. You need to kind. Every time I'm for, you be be on my prayer. To get a car, I'm ready for. To car, you know, any any fa. I'm a man for insana. I'm a driver for. I say you send so much man for. You need a car. To an angkasa kwa police for. I know. I'm in a net. I have bonko money. I have basa basa phobia. Anyha. In this area, I'm a bubu no ma. I say no ma wa hamba say. Police man ba kupebe timi a kwe to iso. And so, yeah, why? Well, and you say, be I a cosam buffo and I say, send your man for Cassa to for Tehan, no, yeah, baby Bassasana. Obian to Sahan, my train is cut at all plot as you a downs home into me corner, my bar, my corner, my bar, into the Omaio Hadi, in fact, a honey papa, and Yaminqua, and Yanma, and Mina, be brave. I had drinking sport, be brave tones, you, Pierre Tamuton, a union, a hano, be brave, Omoko, a be free, Madina, a be free, and Momba, no more be doomed than Omoko. In the common mind, just one day, cross air, a be a babu, I didn't know, or be unfun to do an idea. Mind to me, I just one day, cross, I say, I and I drew back a pet. In the sea, and I hiff, and no more mabuni, import a hini, a dikogu, Nadia Chia, Yahusheba before Frabon. In the normal way, I'm a woman, sir. Some more person we have need to cry now. Oh, man, you and so I at Tiano because Basabasaya or Mokawasa Minasana at Tia Ewaha. 
a minimum flower pot, or my flower pot in our ha. Ye yet your mamma and fump and for the bray, bumpata, nana, 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 for lumina, a boy, sir, a yet your mamma, a day on who I had me to a mason for me, labourers, yes, yam, or my neighbor, and to a moon on my yama, yam, see your baby, I say, I have bought Kiosa, ye quite your mamma, near Baba Dum, near Co. Okay, and see, yeah, that's your frown say. Made a cabratano. Yo, so you just heard from Kwabna Tano. According to him, he has lived here for quite a long time. And even though he knows this place, he's not supposed to occupy here. But uh, he believes that staying here, he has been doing a lot of things which will help, I mean, the community, help the people who use the motorway, the expressway all the time. So he believes that uh, he has made his livelihood. He has fen, he has a family out of here that he has a block shop. He has been able to build his own house and on some room and then he has other businesses that he's running. So according to them he claimed that they are not just quarters but they are legitimate Ghanaians. So if there was going to be any exercise like this, they should have drawn the attention before they could pack all their things which are so important to them and then they could carry on. But we are not done yet. We'll, we'll continue with this developing story and move to the West Wagon Municipal Assembly to speak to authorities there to give us more insight as to what to do because we are told that this demolition is not going to end here. They're continuing to the entire stretch from the Tema Accra motorway. So we see that all the wooden structures and containers have all been cleared off the expressway. We hand it over to Parkwesi Asari, who is in the studios now. Thank you very much. Uh, Just went for important reporting live from the Accra Tema Motorway. Up next is Media General's hashtag Garbage Out campaign. All right, so tv 3 sanitation campaign dabbed hashtag garbage out took a tour of the Kole Lagoon near the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. The effort is to reawaken the general public and duty bearers alike to make Ghana clean again. Johnny Hughes has more. Lagoon, a very popular place in the city of Accra. In 1932, there's something called the regatta, which was organized by a group called the Yakas. Today, in 2019, what you see here is what is left of the Kole Lagoon. A regatta can be held here. The level of filth you find here didn't just happen overnight. It took a lot of time for it to happen. And everybody seems to have watched on to have allowed this to happen. The flamingos are singing their own chorus along the filth that you have in this very place. Silt, sun, and mud have taken over the lagoon. Also in 1999, the Kole Lagoon Ecological Restoration Project was launched. It was supposed to last from 2000 to 2008. But as we speak, it does appear that the project has been reduced to just desilting or dredging out the lagoon to canalize it to allow for flood water to flow through. Somebody certainly must be explaining what the full details of the project are or was and why we have not been able to properly achieve it. Now, if you turn attention to the far left, you would also see sanitary sites that's presently here. And even though there is uh, a Zoom Lion receptacle that's supposed to be collecting the rubbish, people dump rubbish here with careless abandon. In the full glare of the EPA, in the full glare of the local authority, and in the full glare of everybody else who lives around here. And we're putting it out to you with the hashtag garbage out. All right, so you've got to join us on this campaign. It's hashtag garbage out. Well, that's how we conclude Midday Life here on TV3. Thanks very much for watching. My name is Parkus Yasari.